Alrighty, we are here today with our February wrap-up. We all read some awesome books that we can't wait to discuss with you, so let's just get into it. So the first book I want to talk about is The Memory of Forgotten Things by Kat Zhang. Now this is a wonderful, kind of contemporary middle grade novel that comes out in May of this year. So our main character in this novel is a girl named Sophia who has these vivid and very real feeling recent memories of her mother that she keeps a secret because um, everybody else thinks her mother died when she was six. She befriends a boy in her middle school named DJ and they discover that he has these different memories of his father as well. Together they want to try to solve the mystery of why they are having these memories um, and they discover that they were both born on the same day during a total solar eclipse. Sophia becomes convinced that on the upcoming solar eclipse she will be able to start to bridge the gap between her memories and the real world and bring her mother back. It is a heartbreaking and very touching novel. I am so glad I picked it up and I definitely recommend you grab it when it comes out in May. So one book that I read recently and really enjoyed was Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed. This is the story of an Indian American teenager named Maya who is also Muslim and um, it's about her growing up in a small community. Uh, just going to high school and then trying to figure out what she wants to do after she graduates. Um, her parents have a very like set plan for her and she kind of wants something different. She wants to go to film school in New York City. So she's just dealing with all of that and then a terrorist attack happens and the suspected terrorist shares the same last name as her and this causes her entire community to kind of go against her and her family and she has to deal with a lot of Islamophobia and things like that. It was a very, it's just a really good story. I really liked Maya as a character. I just wanted to be her friend. I thought she was so cool. Um, it deals with her kind of falling in love for the first time and I thought that was a really nice plot line as well. And then obviously the issues with Islamophobia was really hard to get through. Um, but it just kind of made me see things in a new light. I had never read a character quite like her, and I just think that this was a really great read. The first book that I read in February is Lions and Liars by Kate Beasley. Our, the main character in this story is this guy in the middle, Frederick Fredrickson. He and his friends are um, kind of wallflowers. They just started fifth grade, and he desperately wants to be in with the popular crowd. But one of his friends has this theory that there is uh, a hierarchy of kids in middle school. Some kids are lions, some kids are gazelles, some kids are meerkats, and some kids are fleas. And Frederick Fredrickson, he says, is a flea. So he desperately wants to break out of this, this role. So Frederick does something totally out of character and one thing leads to another and he actually ends up at a disciplinary summer camp for boys, totally by accident. There is a case of mistaken identity and Frederick gets to basically pretend to be somebody else and um, this, this new person he's pretending to be is not a flea. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. I really enjoyed this one. It's the first book that I've read in quite a while where um, all of the main characters are boys and you really hear uh, what 10 year old boys are thinking. I have never been a 10 year old boy, I, neither has Kate Beasley, but I really enjoyed the way that she brought their voices to life. And this one is coming out in June. Next up I have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Now this is one of my new all time favorite high fantasy novels, it absolutely blew me away. Um, this is not only a really complex and a vast high fantasy world that kind of almost bridges on science fiction at times, but it's also so well written in a way I've never experienced before. This book is written in such a unique way that kind of as it comes together, and I can't really explain how it comes together because it's a definitely a spoiler for the book, but I literally had a blew my mind moment. <laughs> so this book takes place in a world in which um, extinction level environmental catastrophes happen with some frequency and the people who live there have kind of come to adapt themselves to that and are able to survive through it often. Um, there are also people who have kind of been come attuned like almost a bit like magically to the seismic energies of the earth and they can control the earth with these powers. Now not only is the story in the world very cool but this is one of the only adult high fantasy novels I have ever read that is just full of amazing diversity. There is uh, different sexual identities, different gender identities, uh, explorations of race and oppression and slavery um, and it's just 
absolutely well done and I've never experienced anything like it. I actually finished this book on the very last day of January but I am still thinking about it till now and I just cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't picked it up yet, I definitely urge you to. So I have become a huge fan of Neil Shusterman. I've kind of gone on a Neil Shusterman kick after reading Scythe last year and absolutely loving it. So this month I read the sequel to Scythe which is called Thunderhead. Um, in the first book, it's about um, humankind has kind of learned how to be immortal. Uh, we have figured out how to, like, we no longer die, we no longer feel pain, there's very little crime, um, and it all happened because of an artificial intelligence called the Thunderhead that began as like a cloud of sorts and slowly grew over time to kind of govern over all of mankind. Um, so. The only issue in this world is that now that we are immortal, there's an overpopulation crisis. And to kind of combat that, the Thunderhead has created something called the Scythedom, and these people are the only people that can administer death to the population. Um, so when a Scythe comes up to you, it is your time to die, there's no way around it. And all of the different Scythes have different methods of doing this. Um, I loved Scythe. It was one of my favorite books of last year, one of my favorite books of all time. I thought it was super thought-provoking. And the sequel kind of takes off right from where Scythe ended, which is a huge cliffhanger. And I won't say much more than that, obviously, because I don't want to spoil anything, but in this book you get to learn a lot more about the artificial intelligence, the Thunderhead, and I just thought it was so interesting. So. I don't know, this has become one of my favorite series ever, and I highly recommend it. The next one on my list is The Spirit of Cattail County by Victoria Piontek. This one, um, I don't actually know exactly what time period it's set in. Um, I kept bouncing between sort of like the 50s and current day, so it never really specifies. But it's all set in the Everglades, and our main character is Sparrow Dalton. Her mother has just passed away. Um, her, her mean aunt has come to sell the house that she grew up in and she thinks that her mom is still living in and um, just wants to uproot her and change everything. So on top of all that, her whole life Sparrow has seen a, a ghost of a boy and he's basically been her only friend. Um, the town that she lives in is really clicky, um, like deep, deep rooted uh, family pride sort of things. There's, there's the rich family and the poor family and people don't really mixed together socially. So she's had a very lonely life and now um, she's going to be taken away from all of it. So um, it's really beautifully written. Uh, there's a mystery aspect and she meets a fortune teller at one point and it all just comes together in this really lovely, um, I would say magic realism, sort of contemporary magic realism story. I would definitely recommend this one for ages 10 and up. Next up, I have EXO by Fonda Lee. Now, if you saw our blind book shopping challenge, you'll know that this is where I grabbed this book. I had never heard of it before, and I'm so glad I randomly picked it up. Now, this is a science fiction novel set place about 100 years after Earth has been colonized by an alien race. There are people in this world called EXOs, and these are humans that the alien race has kind of granted this almost like exoskeleton to make them more powerful. This is again, like the fifth season, just kind of something I've never seen before in science fiction. It is a really interesting take um, and look at an exploration of colonization and oppression and what that means for people. Um, there are so many different shades of grey going on in here and I just thought it was a wonderful, wonderful science fiction novel. I also think it's very accessible if you're not really into sci-fi, so either way I definitely recommend it. Another book that I really enjoyed recently is The Dangerous Art of Blending In by Angelo Cermelis. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This was a very hard-hitting and emotional read and it is about a boy named Evan who is dealing with a very abusive mother at home. Um, he's having a hard time in school and he's also recently realized that he has feelings for his best friend so he's also dealing with his own sexuality. Um, it's really just like a coming-of-age contemporary novel um, but massive trigger warning for abuse. There are some scenes in here that were extremely hard to read but I found the entire thing so moving. I read it in a day and I just found it really impactful. Um, there are mixed reviews on this uh, so if this is something you're interested in but kind of wary about the subject matter, I would recommend reading some other people's reviews first. I personally didn't find anything offensive about it, I just loved it, but yeah, check out the other reviews first. Um, but I can just tell that this is a really personal story from this author. 
a lot of the events that happened in here did happen to him when he was a child. So yeah, if you're looking for something that's gonna move you, I think this would be a good one. And to break up things from just reading middle grade all the time, I also read The Illegal by Lawrence Hill. Corey and I actually did this uh, as a buddy read. She read it a lot faster than I did, but, uh, but we still read it within the same month. This is one that I had heard about for years, uh, and I finally had a chance to pick up. It is set um, in the fictional countries of Zantoro Land and Freedom State. Um, and it's about a marathon runner who uh, illegally goes to the Freedom State to compete so that he can um, escape Zantoro Land and also raise money for his family. But um, there are all sorts of twists and turns. It's really, really well written um, and very fast paced. And there's all sorts of of intertwining stories from different characters, but uh, I would definitely recommend reading it. Um, I did find the ending a little too neat and tidy, but endings are difficult. They can't all be perfect. Um, so yeah, Lawrence Hill, The Illegal. I'm really looking forward to reading more of his stuff now. Check it out. All right, so that was just some of the books that we read and really enjoyed in February. Let us know some of the books that you loved this month in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. As per usual, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye.